that calculation will actually be the axle length so the axle length will be 1485 millimeters because it's the inner edges of each wheel that sit on the inner edge of the rails all we need to do is work out how far from this axis of this object this axis should be by calculating the distance of half the first width of the wheel which is 0.025 we go along and we need to find the position of the second wheel and that also needs to be an addition of 0.025 because that wheel has to uh, take into consideration that its, its origin is central and we need to extend half of its width so to work out the position of the second wheel we end up with an addition to the 1485 distance on between the two inter interior edges of 1.535 and that's just simply a matter of going into the properties of the second wheel by right clicking and putting that measurement into the X portion of its uh, group position and then that wheel will be set in the right position and have uh, the right distance of 1485 millimeters between it and the other wheel and that's on the inside edge so we just go into its properties and make the change we put a measurement of 1.535 into the X and if you're not sure why, again, I'll just go over that. The um, both the wheels sit on centrally, and either side of them overhangs half of their width, and that's where their position is set by. So we have to move past that half of their width first to get them to get that space between them of the accurate 485 millimeters. To use the shift tool, go to the object operations panel and click on right click on the shift tool to make sure the properties are set up first. And we see that the parameters are set up correctly. Just move down to them. And you can see that it is already set up to rotate 90 degrees on the Z axis, which is what we want. So we can click on it and it will rotate and just change to wireframe view to make sure that it does that. And switching to the wireframe view, we can see that the axis is in fact pointing the right way. The Y is pointing up, X is pointing left and right, and Z is pointing away. Now we just have to resize the axle and put it in place. And when we have that in place, we can make the two wheels and the axle into a single object and then we can make copies of that and it'll save us a lot of time. So we switch over to our measurements that we have recorded and we see the axle radius is 0.05 so that will mean a diameter of 0.1 so we'll, we'll just scale the axle to the correct diameter first Go to scale to size X is the width that'll be 1.485, the Y will be 0.1, the X will be point, the Z will be 0.1, and there we have the axle. To position the axle correctly between the two wheels we need to give it a height that is exactly central to the wheel which will be 0.525 on the Y axis Z axis will be 0 because we're starting at the origin of the grid and the X position will be half of the distance between the wheels plus half of the width of one of the wheels and that turns out to be 0.756 so we can now enter those into the properties 
position on the X, zero. The Y will be 0.525. Z will be zero. Sorry, X will be 0.768. And there you can see it's perfectly positioned. We have our first set of wheels on an axle. To make our life easier, we are going to join these three separate objects into one object and we can then copy that object into as many axle wheel sets as we like. And to do that, first select one of the objects and then over on the right hand side, these controls here are used for joining separating and other operations. We'll see all them in action later. But the top one is the object merge button. And if you click that, that will now wait. You can see the cursor has changed to a crosshair. It'll wait till we select another object and then it'll join that second object to the first one that we selected. And we'll select the axle. So we have the wheel selected as our, as our first object if we select the axle those two objects are now joined and you can see probably the first time you've noticed the bounding box with empty space within it and uh, the axle now can't be independently moved from the wheel now we're going to select the other wheel and then join that to the axle and the wheel so you select the wheel, select object join, come back over and click on the axle or the wheel, doesn't matter because they're both joined now. And now what we have is one complete object. There is no separate objects here now. The wheel on this side, the axle and this wheel are all one. And if we adjust the size, everything changes together. There's a few things to note about our new assembly here of the wheels and the axle and firstly you'll notice the bounding box when I select this object the box just touches the very extents of the object and it's handy to use the bounding box to resize any objects because it it's, um, represents the, the size the object will take up and if I switch to wireframe view and reselect the object, you'll notice how the object now only has one axis and that's central to the bounding box of the object. If I use the edit control and grab the X axis arm, I can rotate these wheels along the X axis. 